First Lady, thank you for everything. Today. I want to thank everybody who's with us today. God bless you. I want to ask you now to just lend me your ears and your time for just a, a little while. Pray with me as we ask God to bless us in this message, to help us understand that he is everything to us. We need him. He does not need us, but he loves us. Thank God in the name of Jesus that he loves us and wants us to come to him. Amen. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you now, Father, for everything that you've done. We thank you, we honor you, we give you all praise and all glory as we ask you, Father, to bless this topic today. The topic of God's will is too high for the devil. Thank you, Father, as we ask you now for all your many blessings. Father, we ask now that you will come and speak to your waiting people. Hide this old preacher, mute this old preacher, that you will be seen and heard and none of me. In the name of Jesus, if we ask that you come and mute this old preacher and show your spirit, we ask, Lord, that you will bless each and every one under the sound of this voice. We ask, Lord, that you will come and bless those who, will, who is looking for an answer to prayers and to situations in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord, if you come and speak to your way, the people all shall be made well with their lives. And all shall be made well with their souls. If you just come, Lord, and speak to your waiting people. We ask, Lord, that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, come speak to your waiting people, that all shall be made well with us. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want to thank everybody who had a portion, a part of this, in this morning service. But I would like to lift up this morning for, for your consideration and your hearing an old saying that I borrowed from, uh, from, I borrowed from a rapper. Can't touch this. I believe his name is Hammer. Is this correct? Amen. I believe this man. This man's name is Hammer. He, he used to say, "You can't can't touch this." Don da da da. But what I am saying today, you can't touch this. God's will is too high for the devil. Can't touch this. God's will is too high for the devil. When you hear the proclamation today, too high. For the devil, I am talking about obeying God's word and God making us secure in his will for us. When God gives us something to do, nothing or anybody can stop God's will for us. And when we obey God and live in his will for us, the word of God says in Psalm 91, 9 through 11, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwellings. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. When you hear the expression today, God's will today, know that this expression is derived from the word of God and is speaking, out, uh, speaking about the work of God in both his creation at large and in the lives of every man, woman, and child's existence. God's will is composed of two aspects. 
God's immutable plan for us all, which cannot be frustrated. In other words, what God has planned for us, we cannot change. And his desire wish involving the cooperation of all his human creation. See, God has a will for us that we cannot change, and he has a holy desire that we will hear him and cooperate in the, in the obtaining of his will in our life. Another way to state these distinctions is to reveal, is reveal uh, the first uh, as God's supreme or determined will, and the latter as his moral or ethical will for us. In other words, God has a supreme will that he desires for us, and he has a moral and ethical will that he hopes we will follow. When we are living in the will of God for our lives, it is as if he places us on a high hill somewhere in this life. There are where those who are against his will for us and those who prefer a life of sin to his will cannot touch us. In other words, <laughs> when we're in God's will, that and we're in his will willingly, there is nothing in this world that can break that will for us. Today, we will look at an occurrence in the life of that great prophet, Elijah, that shows God's control over evil and sin, and how God will, will lead and protect and keep us if we are living in his will as he wants us to live and doing what he has for us to do in this life. Now. There is nothing known about the parentage of uh, Elijah the Tisbite. You know, his parents, we don't know anything about his folks, where he comes from, uh, where, uh, who he was other than what the Bible says. We do not know his who his folks were. But we do know that he is one of the most unique and dramatic figures of the Bible and biblical history. We know that he is said to have been rugged in appearance. You know, the old saying about you can't judge a first uh, book by its cover. I think this applies to Elijah. Because we know that he is said to have been rugged in appearance. And that he was not the best dressed person of his time. In fact, we're told that he wore animal skins and that he appeared to be very hairy. The picture that I have in my imagination of Elijah is someone who seemed to be a little strange, but who did and said just what God said for him to say and do. The picture that I get of Elijah is a man who lived only for God's purpose. He realized that when we do as God says for us to do, to borrow from MC Hammer, da, 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 the devil can't touch us. Now, don't, don't, don't look at me singing. I'm not trying to sing. I'm just trying to tell you how, how we got to where we're going. Because I, I remember this Don, 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 Don. Can't touch this. And whenever I see us living and whenever I, I come to tell you about living in God's will, I'm telling you that nothing can touch you. That's out of God's will. The devil can't touch this when we are in God's will. 
When we say what God has for us to say, the devil can't touch this. When we obey God without question, the devil can't touch this. Because we, we are then standing on the will of God. And as we stand on the will of God, God will lift us up unto the high and solid grounds of his world and of his will. There it is too high for the devil to touch. As we stand on the will of God, he will place us in the heights of his love, in the heights of his concern, in the heights of his care. Study has shown that Elijah the Tisbite, whose name means my God is Jehovah, also knew that Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide. Elijah also knew that Jehovah also means Jehovah Nissa. That means that my Lord, my Lord, the Lord is my banner. Jehovah Shalom means the Lord is my peace. And Jehovah Shama means that the Lord is there. And, and, and I, can, I can attest to each and every one of them. I can attest that when we are with the Lord and when God is with us, he will provide everything that we need. When God is with us, that means he will allow us to parade and praise his holy name and be glad in us. When God is with us, that means we have peace in this life. And when God is with us, that means that we are never alone. Elijah knew that he was sent by God to turn the sinning people of Israel back to the place where they would realize that the Lord is God all by himself. God told Elijah to tell the people and the king that's worshiping the gods of the heathens, the little G gods, that, they, that, that, that these gods were worse than useless. There's nothing they could do. And there's no way they can out rule the one true God. So God told Elijah to tell the people and the king that worshiped these gods of the heathens that they that were worse than useless. He said, because when they walk with or worship other little G gods, they are within the reach of Satan and the destruction of evil. Let me say that again. When we walk with or worship any God other than the one true God in the name of Jesus, we are within the reach of Satan. And all he has to do is, as another song says, reach out and touch somebody. But that touch is not for our good. That touch will not make us a better person. That touch will not make this a better world. He reached out and touched somebody and he turned them completely over to his evil ways. God told Elijah to tell the people that if they placed their hopes in idol gods, they had no hope at all. God told Elijah not to worry, but to say what he had told him to say and to do and go where he told him to go, and he would be at a place too high for the devil to reach. 
God showed to us in his word how Elijah obeyed him and did as he was commanded. He lifted up Elijah and nothing or anything would be able to harm him or was able to harm Elijah and bring him down. Elijah did not fear man. He did not worry about what man could do to him. As long as he stayed in the will of God, he would be able to just sit in the supremeness of God's will in a safe place too high for the devil to reach and be safe and secure for all along. We all need to be in God's will today, church. We all need to be high on the hill of God's will, like Elijah. In order to be blessed by God and be set too high for the devil to touch, we need to be in God's divine will for us individually and collectively. Not his permissive will now. We do not want God's permissive will to prevail in our lives. Because what because that would mean that God has lifted his grace and his mercy from our presence. And we will be low enough for the devil to reach out and touch us. The word says in Romans 1, 28 and 30 through 30, Romans 1, 28 through 31. The, now I'm going to read from the, 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 the message Bible. Because this declares it exactly as it's intended to be. The Message Bible declares these expected results of what happens when the devil is able to reach out and touch us. The word says in Romans 1 and 28, to begin with, since they didn't bother to acknowledge God, God quit bothering them and let them run loose. We see that today. 29. And then all hell broke loose. Rapid evil. We see it today. Grabbing and gasping. Vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy. Wanting killings. Bickering and cheating. Look at them, mean spirit and venomous. Verse 30, fought tongue, mean liars. God bashes, non-believers, bullies, swaggers, insufferable windbags. They keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives. They ditch their parents when they get in the way. Verse 31, stupid, slimy, cruel, and cold-blooded. Read it for yourself. And then compare the King James to the Message Bible. The Message Bible breaks it down, breaks it down in today's terms, terms that we can understand. And I'm sure that you have seen how the more away from God this earth, this country gets, how each one of these characteristics seem to get bigger and more prevalent. And after a while, Satan is touching. The devil is touching every institution. The devil, to include the church, the devil is touching everybody except those who are still in God's will. When God has turned us over to a reprobate mind, the devil can and will touch us and bring us off the high hill of God's grace and mercy. Because God will turn us over to that reprobate mind if that's what we desire. That's his permissive will for us. He will allow us to go to hell. He's never going to send you to hell, but he will allow us to sit out, to go to hell on our own. 
I've heard people say, my God is too good for to send me to hell. That's why I don't believe there's no hell. My God is too good. Oh, no, no, no. God is too good. He's not going to send you to hell. But He, his permissive will will allow you to make the trip by yourself. And once you get there, the devil will shall touch you forever and forever because you can't come back. Let us look at what's going on at this particular time in the prophet Elijah's life to understand how being on the hill, high hill of God's will, where the devil can't touch you, can and will protect us in this life. The Bible said that there was a wicked king ruling Samaria named Ahaz, help me somebody, Ahaz, Ahaz, well, the devil's trying to stop this, but I hear Ahaziah. Ahaziah. Ahaziah, thank you. Praise the Lord. The, the Ahaziah. Ahaziah was a wicked king, just like his father, King Ahab, who had to deal with Elijah also. But we will talk about that at another time. However, I am told that King Ahaziah was a wicked king. He was a man who, who was just as evil as he was sinful. He refused and rejected the only true, almighty, true God, Jehovah. But one day, see, you might think you might get away, but I got some, uh, my daddy used to tell me, if the wash water don't get you, the rich water will. One day, the king was walking around his house, continuing in his wicked ways. The Bible said that somehow he fell through a lattice and was injured very badly. Studies show that a lattice was something like what we would call a window or an opening today, made of scripts of wood, or a window-like construction in the roof of a building, like a, a sunroof, a sunlight roof, made with scripts of wood. The Bible said that the king fell through this construction, and his injury had bought him brought on some kind of fever or sickness, which the king realized that he was not getting well or getting any better from. In this fall of King Ahaziah, we see the mighty providence of God at work. We, you might get by for a little while in your acts of sin, but you will not get away. We can see also how God's care and love that he has for all of us, regardless to how wicked and undeserving we are, is in work here. In the pulling down of this wicked king, we can still see God's mercy, his love, and his grace. All of us that have lived in sin must at some time or another realize that we were under grace and use that grace to turn from our wicked ways. God could have just allowed the hand of death to take the king just that easy, and the king would be lost forever. But God, in his love and care, with, with this fall of the king, God gave the king another chance to repent and be saved. He put him on a sick bed. He did not kill him, allow him to die right away. He put him on a sick bed where he could weigh his situation, think about how in his relationship with God, and get right, right on his sick bed if he only would have taken God's mercy. Just as he has done and is doing for many of us today, God has given us chance after chance after chance after chance to get right with him. Some of us have taken that chance and turned from our wicked ways, but others just keep right on trying God, as my grandmother used to say. You don't try God. You must turn to him and turn from your wicked ways because we don't know when grace is no more and mercy runs out and death will overtake us. And if we die out of the will of God, then hell is going to be our home. The devil would have reached out and touched us forever. Somebody ought to say amen. God looks beyond our faults and see our needs. This is why he gives us chance 
after chance after chance. But one day that grace shall run out and mercy shall be no more. Somebody ought to help me here. In the fall of King Ahaziah, we see how God has the power of control of our lives. The earlier that we come to realize that God is in control of everything, the better off that we will be here. We cannot heal the sick, but God can. We cannot direct the hands of death, but God can. We cannot change the direction of the wind, but God can. We cannot calm that angry sea, but God can. We cannot feed ourselves. I said it right, we cannot feed ourselves. We do not pull ourselves up by our own uh, uh, bootstraps, so to speak, but God can. We cannot create life, but God can. We cannot even control our own breath. Somebody ought to say amen. When the time comes for us to die, oh, we, we must die, and we don't have any say about it, but God can place us on the heel of his will, that even during this time, the devil cannot touch us. Somebody ought to say amen. The, but what we can do is stay in the will of God today in this life, and God will allow us a victory and set us on the heel of grace, mercy, and protection where death has no sting and the grave has no victory as he did with Elijah as proof of the fact that God has all power over life and death. Second Kings 2 and 11 and 12 to gives us the account of Elijah not dying but being carried away without dying in a chariot from heaven. Can't touch this. It's too high for the devil. I tell you that if we live for God, if we're in his will, even when it comes time for, God, for, for our deathbed to be made, I want Jesus making up my deathbed. I want him to fluff my pillows because when I get to the other side, the devil won't be able to touch me. But I open these eyes. I, I know I will. But I open the eyes on the other side. God will be there to grant me mercy, to grant me interest into his kingdom. And the devil cannot touch this. Somebody ought to say amen. The Bible said that God was so pleased with Elijah that he did not suffer death. If we live for God in this life, we will live with God in the life to come. We will be on the hill of eternal life with Elijah in the will of God. Jesus says in Luke 12 and 32, it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And although King Ahaziah was flat on his back and in pain, he had the nerve he had the audacity to inquire of Beelzebub, uh, a false god in the city of Akron, uh, whether or not he would ever recover. The fool, and I call him the fool, had the nerve to call on a god that could not help him, had the nerve to call on a god that could not even help himself, rather than the one true god that prayed for an actual uh, uh, healing and deliverance. And you saw what it got the king, then that's the same thing it would get each one of us to call on a false God, to call on any other name except God in the name of Jesus. That was a fatal mistake of the king and one that did not have to be made because it was a mistake made in sin. The word of God tells us that we are never to consult with Satan about anything. Leviticus 19 and 31 says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards or to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And Isaiah 42 and 8 states, I am the Lord. That is my name and my glory. I will not give to another my, my praises to graven images. We need to have faith and to believe that the Lord, he is our God. And there is nothing too hard for our God. Where there's sickness, uh, he's a healer. Can't touch this. Where there's financial problems, he's a merciful and kind banker. You can't touch this. 
where there are family problems, he's a counselor. Can't touch this. Where there are many kinds of troubles at all, he is our refuge and our strength. You can't touch this. Do not consult with Satan. Uh, please let me give you something, a little something on the side for free. Leave those palm readers and root workers alone. They can't touch this. Leave those horoscopes in the paper right where it is in the paper. Don't consult on horoscopes. Your birthstone ain't mean nothing but a rock with color. Somebody ought to say amen. Leave those dream books alone. You might not know what a dream book is, but don't try to find any, uh, 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 don't try to find any reasoning for your dreaming with just going catch to prayer. That's all, catch to the Lord in prayer. Because dream books, people used to have books where they look up titles of dreams to determine what that dream means. The only person that can, the only one that can interpret a dream is Jesus. Leave all those tools of the devil alone. And go down on your knees. And be carried up on the hill of God. Of God's will, as was Elijah, too high for the devil. Uh, I'm going to get ready to come home. I'm going to get ready to come. Get ready to end this thing. After the king's fall and the sickness had set in, the Bible says that Ahaziah sent messages, uh, messengers to inquire of the devil, Beelzebub, asking, "Shall I over? Shall I recover?" from this disease. In other words, he was asking, will I be healed? Ahaziah sent it to an idol, a dead graven thing that, 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 that man had made to ask a question that only God knows when, we, when he should have gone down on his knees before God. Ahaziah inquired of this false God in the eyes of God Almighty himself, when we do these kind of things, God will send somebody to tell us about ourselves. God told Elijah to cut short the trip of the messengers and send them back to their king. God told Elijah to tell those messengers, to tell Ahaziah that God is not happy with what he has done. He tried to have another God before the one true God. The Bible said that Elijah told Ahaziah that the false God that he was calling on could not help him now. Elijah told Ahaziah that the God he was serving could not save him now. Elijah told Ahaziah that the God he gave his tithes and offerings to could not hear his cries of affliction now. Elijah told Ahaziah that the Lord, that God said, he shall not come down from the bed on which thou have gone up, but thou shall surely die. God told Elijah to, to say just what the Lord gave him to say, and then rest on the heel of his help and protection. The devil can't touch this. They do not worry about what the king might do or might say. I am told that King Isaiah became very angry and upset. The Bible shows me that King Ahaziah acted just like some of us act when one of God's people tell us something that we don't want to hear. We set about trying to discredit or destroy the messenger of God rather than to get our lives in order. But be careful how you try to come against the person who is in God's will because God will set that person on a hill of protection too high for the devil to climb. God said in 1 Chronicles 16 and 22, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. The Bible says that the king sent a captain and 50 men to bring Elijah before him. But when they found Elijah, he was sitting on a hill 
of God's will, not worrying about anything or anybody. Oh, hallelujah here. The, the, the captain spoke with the authority of the king and tried to order the man of God off God's hill. The captain did not know that when we sit on the hill of God's will, it's too high for the devil to reach. And no man, no woman or thing can bring us down. I let me say it again. You can't touch this. Oh, God, on God's hill, there's peace of mind. You can't touch this. On God's hill, there's a blessed assurance. You can't touch this. On God's hill, there's victory. You can't touch this. On God's hill is the will of God, and you can't touch this because God will stand by us on the hill of his will. The captain of the 50 thought that the king's word would be enough to do the job, but he soon found out that when you are working against God, you will always come up on the short end of the stick. There is no power strong enough to overrule God. We can't touch him. Somebody ought to say amen. The Bible says that the captain says to Elijah, the man of God, uh, my king said for you to come off the hill and, 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 and that hill right now and to come to him. I have orders to drag you down and take you to the king. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, listen to that confidence. If I be a man of God, then let the fire come down from heaven and consume you and the 50. And the Bible tells me that right then and there, whoosh, that came the fire down from heaven. And the captain and all 50 of his men were no more. You can't touch this. When God says something, you can't touch this. Church and all those who will try to offset God's will for your own, for your own motives, you better listen to what I'm saying. You had better know that God is not going to stand by and let his people be used and abused at the hands of sinners. There will be some kind of fire. That means trouble. Come down from heaven and whoosh. All the troublemakers will be taken away. Oh, hallelujah. The word says, fret not yourself because of evildoers, because soon you shall be blown away. Somebody ought to help me here. And I am told that King Ahaziah still did not believe God resolved to take care of his own. And the Bible said the wicked king tried it again, for he sent another captain in his 50 the same, to the same sure destruction, trying to get the man of God off the hill of God's will. And the Bible said that, 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 that Satan had put it in the king's mind that he was over God, but that that is what Satan will do. He will not allow those who are out of God's will uh, to have eyes and uh, ears to see the damnation that is about to overcome with them when they disobey God's will. The, the fire from heaven came down on the second 50. Uh, and the king and the captain itself, the, Elijah told him the same thing he told the first captain and the first fifty, and whoosh, the fire came down. If we just open our heart, we can easily see that God is God all by Himself. This is what the third captain said. Did the Bible said the third captain came not on his own authority or the authority of the king, but rather seeking mercy and grace of God. And he was spared as God told Elijah to come down from the hill and go tell the king himself again what thus said the Lord. And the king died according to the word of God. God shall. God's will shall be done. He will be heard. When you are on the hill of God, 
God's will is too high for the devil. MC Hammer said, and I use this thing again, da, 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 you can't touch this. I can proclaim today that when we are in God's will, our life, and we have a life that can never be lost, can't touch this. When we're in God's will, we have a seal that can never be broken. Satan can't touch this. When we're in God's will, we have a forgiveness that can never be lost. Can't touch this. When we're in God's will, we have an intercessor who can never be overruled. You can't touch this. We have a victory that can never be conquered. You can't touch this. When you're in God's rule, when you're in God's rule, when you're in God's will, we have a hope that can never be sorrowful. We can't touch this. When we're in God's will, I'm getting ready to close. I'm going to close this thing out by bringing the hope and let you see the hope of our eternal glory. In God's will, in God's will, we have a resurrection promise one day that can never be stopped because nothing on earth can stop God's will for us to take us home to be with him one day. There's trouble all around us, but fret not yourself because God is in control. You might look like the devil is overruling. The devil is having his way, but one day and one day soon, we're going to see that you can't touch this. You can't touch what God has said is going to happen. If God made a promise, he's going to do it. He promised a way for us to see salvation. That salvation is open, but we must stay in his will. Somebody ought to say amen. There's not, not enough days in our life that we can outsmart God. God knows everything. Nothing is impossible for him, and we cannot touch his will with our will. So let us live in God's will and in the safety of his eternal grace, his mercy, and his love and go home to be with Jesus one of these days. Amen and amen.